Hello everyone and welcome to the Bright Star Assemblies channel. I'm Danny Creech. This is video number one of what will be a long series of videos over several years. In these upcoming videos, I will be covering the history of how this design came into existence, the design process, the construction of the prototype, flight testing of the prototype, and changes in the design resulting from the analysis of the flight test data and finally, the construction of the first production kit aircraft. Originally, I had not planned on creating videos of this aircraft until we were ready to start selling kits. But then I got to thinking that some of you might like to see the challenges I have already faced and will continue to face during the design process of this brand new design and how I overcame them. Also, I figured as I uploaded videos of these challenges, many of you could post suggestions on how you would address these challenges I am facing. Maybe you have a better idea than what I came up with. I don't mind thinking of this as a community project. I do realize the importance of positive input from viewers like yourself. I'm sure that there are possibly some of you watching this video who are engineers. I value your positive input and ideas. If you see something in my design and think there's a better way or maybe a simpler way, please comment and let me know. If you want to send me your comments privately, my email address is in the description below. My goal is to have the best designed, safest aircraft I possibly can. I did not spend money on a piece of paper so I could state I am an engineer. Instead, I have spent a large part of my life engineering a wide array of things and building aircraft. In the past, I have taken several college classes on aircraft structural design and aerodynamics. As a master and gold seal certified flight instructor, one of the topics I teach my students is aerodynamics. To ensure my design is solid before I start building the first part, I plan on hiring an engineering firm and letting them verify my design. I am sure there will need to be some minor changes to my design before I begin construction. As an ATP pilot, I have a passion for aviation, a love for building aircraft, and I love a challenge. This aircraft I'm about to talk to you about, which we have codenamed Pontus, is actually my second aircraft design. My first aircraft design, which is a very unique stole two-seat aircraft, has been put on the back burner for now. I will finish that design after I have finished this aircraft. I decided to complete this amphibious aircraft first, as I have more of a desire to get it done. Passion is everything with a project of this size. There's nothing else like this aircraft in the world. Plus, it has some very special features, which I will share in my next video. Well, now that you know a little bit about me, let's talk about my design. I want to start with the background and development of this unique design and how it came about. In 2012, while my wife and I were living in the Philippines, which consists of approximately 1,700 islands, I realized the need for an amphibious aircraft for faster travel. Unlike the lower 48 states of America, the Philippine Islands does not have the national highway system like we have. It is very easy to get around there, but it just takes a lot of time, days in some cases. So living there planted the seeds for this amphibious aircraft in my mind. Although there are many amphibious designs which I like, such as the Icon A5, the thought of paying almost half a million dollars for a two-seat single-engine light sport aircraft that can only be flown VFR is just ridiculous. Having built three experimental aircraft myself and having worked on many, many others, I just figured I could make an amphibious aircraft of my own design that did more and I could do it for less money. So basically, I wanted a custom design for less and the experience of designing it myself. With my current connections, I believe I can do that. There was something else I had seen several times over my life which stuck with me and contributed to this design. I have always loved the look of these speed boats you see here. While watching many of these races, I could see this kind of an accident and I would think, gee, if you would just put some wings on it and some control surfaces, that thing could fly. In the Philippines, they have these boats called bunka boats. As you see here, 
They have outriggers on them for stability on the ocean. I have taken many rides on these on the ocean and found them to be very stable. This is why I wanted pontoons versus a monohull with little outriggers on the wings. Looking at land aircraft, which people put on floats, sitting way up high, just looked a bit unstable to me. This Cessna 206 on floats gives you an idea of what I'm talking about. I figured, why not bring the fuselage down lower to the floats and raise the engines back up out of the water? This would make it less top heavy, which in turn would make it more stable on choppy water. I have always loved the look of flying boats, but I just wanted something unique and updated, you know, something sexy. So as you can see, there wasn't just one thing that influenced me with my design. I have actually spent years thinking about this amphibious aircraft in my head and what I wanted to design. I had never put anything on paper. It was kind of like forming fog into a shape. The shape just kept changing over the years, but eventually I was ready to put it on paper so others could see what I could see in my mind. As part of my background, I had never worked with e-glass or carbon fiber much. I knew I wanted my amphibious aircraft to be made out of fiber and not metal, as metal rusts in seawater. Luckily enough, in 2016, I was attending Oshkosh, and during the show, while crossing a grassy area behind a building, I saw a demonstration going on about how to do vacuum infusion with a special type of carbon fiber called a negra. It was a fantastic demonstration. The man giving the presentation was Russ Menis. I got his contact information during the show. At that time, I was living in Columbus, Ohio, and he was down in the Dallas, Texas area. Well, fast forward to 2019, and I'm now working and living in the Dallas, Texas area myself. I ran across Russ's business card, and I got in contact with him. Come to find out, he was just starting to build the plugs for his single-seat aircraft called Odyssey. I got involved with him on this project so I could learn more about vacuum infusion and building the aircraft out of carbon fiber. About six months later, I was talking to Russ, and he told me if I was serious about my design, I needed to draw it out. Although I had thought about putting my design on paper, I still hadn't done it, mainly because I'm just not a good drawer. But I knew he was right. I did these drawings you see here around November 2019. Then I set out for about the fourth time in my life to force myself to learn how to use SolidWorks. It was slow going at first. Then the 2020 government mandated lockdown happened. I, like so many others, got laid off in March of that year. Although I've heard other sayings similar to mine, I believe that out of every adversity comes the seeds for greatness. I truly believe this, and unfortunately, I have a history which proves it to be true. I say this because with all this time on my hands, I had nothing better to do than sit in front of a computer and learn a CAD program. This is what I did for about a month. During that time, I became familiar with websites where other CAD guys posted files. I was looking for a mentor or a tutor who could help me when I was stuck or had a question. There are a lot of people out there in this world that are willing to help. Also, I joined several SolidWorks Facebook groups. I realized that it would take me probably a year or more to have the skills to input my entire aircraft design. So I started looking for an expert who loved aviation and designing. It took me a while, but I did find someone. When I did, we talked about what I was looking for and what I wanted to do. I sent him my drawings and I asked him to turn it into a 3D object. I asked him to make it look sexy. Here's what he sent me back. These are the very first images of my design in 3D form. When I saw these images for the first time, I knew I'd found the right guy for this project. He understood what I wanted to build. Could you imagine pulling onto a ramp or a dock with this sexy aircraft. Everyone around is going to want to come over and look at it. 
Over the next two months, he and I worked together several days a week to modify these first generation photos into something a bit more flyable. In these first set of photos, as you can see, the wing is a bit short and we hadn't chosen the specific airfoil at that time. The horizontal stabilizer was a bit too short and it didn't have any landing gear yet. The nose didn't quite have the curve I wanted and many other things I wanted to change, but he totally got the sexy part right. The best thing about my friend is that he is very understanding and patient with me regarding the changes I've made since these first photos. The biggest change was after I had put four five foot 10 inch men inside the aircraft and saw how tight it was. I asked him to make the entire aircraft 10% bigger. That may sound easy, but required him going back to every single part and every single measurement and making it 10% bigger. By the time I'd asked him to do this, we had already made all the parts for the landing gear, so it was no easy task. Well, this wraps up this video about the history and development of my aircraft design. In my next video, I will share with you how we got from these first photos to where we are now as of May 2021. If you have any questions about the history of my design, please post down below. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Click on the notification bell so you get notified when I upload my next video. Videos will be coming out based on our progress. Thanks again for watching.